All right, so here we are at the computer and I got the thumb drive plugged in. So as we open it up, we can see we have a few folders in here and a PDF, which is the quick start guide that came with the printer, everything that's included, the unpacking process, setting up, putting it all together. So yeah, it goes through the startup process very well and gets you set up. And here it tells you to do the out of bed leveling and input shaping, which that it doesn't do through the auto process. So you gotta make sure you do that. And then here it shows you how to print by clicking on the file. So yeah, pretty good manual actually. And here's actually a pretty nice breakdown of where everything is and what it's called. We also get filament guide for beginners, which technically is good for everyone to look at. Sometimes you do forget. And then we got specification which could be quite useful also to see what kind of hardware we got and the speeds and temperatures things like that so so the next folder I put in here which is the update and I'll get back to that in a second here we have the slicer software and they got Linux Mac and Windows so I'm on a Mac let's go ahead and do that one so I do have a version of the slicer installed on my computer let's see what it does here all right so it's gonna ask me to keep the existing one or replace it I'm gonna replace it because it's an older slicer all right so let's open it up it loads up really quick. We got a welcome configurator here. I'm gonna click down here on select standard printer. I guess let's go to advanced mode and finish. So it's saying there's a newer version available. I guess for now we'll just cancel this. So yeah, this looks a little different, but look at that. It looks like our build plate is from this printer. So where can, okay, maybe up here, there we go. So yeah, well, everything looks quite different than the other versions they had. Okay, it appears that we have the Q1, but I don't see where it says that. Okay, device, maybe here. Uh, it's connecting the device. Okay, so you can actually connect the printer to the slicer. Very strange that I don't see where to change the print in any case. Normally it's right in your face somewhere here. Okay, so right here under the menus, we can see the printer is the Q1 Pro. And here we have a few more to choose from. And if we click on the plus, we can add physical printer here. But in any case, so let's just do another Benchy, slicing it ourselves. So here in the print settings, we got some profiles we can choose from. So we're on fine 0.2 millimeters. If we click on this gear right next to it, we can see we can adjust all of our settings. So everything looks pretty good. Infill looks good too. So everything's pretty much pre-adjusted for this printer as that's the profile we're on. There's our speeds. So it's not printing crazy fast, but 300, which is quick enough. So for brim, we'll put no brim. And if you change it, you can see that we have an arrow here to reverse it. And also it turns a different color here. Actually in the first layers, I'm gonna change the perimeter, wall perimeter to three. And actually it looks like our spiralized mode is right here also. So, so yeah, it's definitely a little different than what I'm used to. So it's a little hard to find everything, but it is all here. seems like only other thing that I don't see is the retraction. Okay. So when we click on expert on these buttons, we have a lot more stuff that comes up in any case, it's all here. Just got to look around and find what you need. But if we're happy with this, I'm going to go back to the platter by clicking up here. And you guys can see this is our navigation buttons here. We can move the model scale it, rotate it, all that stuff. And on the top here, we got more things that you can do. So let's go ahead and just push the slice button down here and it's gonna slice it. So for some reason it says that there's stability issues for whatever reason. So if you connect your printer to the slicer, you can send it straight from here to the printer and the device section. If we click add printer, here you can connect it through the API. But today what we're gonna do is we're just gonna export this G code to our desktop and it's gonna be a G code. We'll click save. And by the way, we're all over the place, but going back to the thumb drive, we do also have test files here. And unfortunately my bamboo lab slicer is taking over all the preview, so including the Benji that we just sliced. But what I wanted to show you guys is where to get the update. So if you go to QD Tech website and then support and software and firmware, then choose the printer you have, which is the Q1 Pro here. Here we can see we can download the newest firmware that's available by clicking on this link, which is here. And then what you're going to do, kind of read what the latest one is. And this is the one we installed, 0.4.419. And if you click on this jump link, you can see here, you can download the package right here. It says, please download the zip file. It's also right here. So, yeah, and then you just download this, extract it, throw it on your thumb drive as the QD update. And it's the two files that's in there. And then plug it into the printer and go to the update section and update it.
But the main part here is we have is fluid, which is clipper backend. And you guys can see we're already connected. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna insert your IP address in the browser. And once you do that, it's gonna connect to the printer. And obviously your printer has to be connected to Wi-Fi. So yeah, here we can see the layout. We've got a lot of macros here. So this is like the dashboard. Then we've got the console, the jobs, everything we've done so far, history, time lapses, more settings, configuration. So here you can configure the printers. Yeah, lots of controls here with the Clipper software. And you guys can see our camera is on right now and it's pretty decent quality. It's a little bit grainy, but obviously you can still see. So let's grab our 3D Benchy that we just made and we'll throw it into the jobs. Then it uploads here and you guys can see, we can see even the preview and we can print it straight from here. You can also preheat. So yeah, you do have full control of the extruder, the print bed, even the heated chamber. And you can lay this thing out the way you want it with what controls you want. So I think we have some controls here next to the jobs, but in any case, yeah, let's just click on print and you guys can see that it's already moving over there and getting ready to print our little Benji. And I'm kind of curious how it's gonna turn out. We do have our filament in black now, so we'll see how it goes. But yeah, you can see the refresh rate is extremely good. There's no lag at all, pretty much. It's about 10 frames per second, 9, 10, 11, so about 10 average, which is great. And one thing I noticed is that it updates everything very fast. Like it sends files very fast and just instantly does things when you control it here which is great to see. So yeah, it's gonna set up for that and start printing. All right, so we're starting another print and this time I connected with the slicer and that's how I sent this print. Now there is another way you can connect through an app that they have, which is pretty cool. If you go to the firmware and scroll down, you can see they have QD link. And if we click on that, it's expanded. You can see we got a little QR code you want to scan that let's say on your computer or whatever and it is available for Android and iOS which we can click on Android download so it's an APK file I'm gonna open it up so I allowed the permission it's asking me if I want to install so looks like it's done and we have a shortcut so I'm gonna click it to open it up so it does appear that we're gonna have to sign up which I'm not too excited about but well maybe not it just asked for our region and now we can add a device okay yeah I guess I was wrong it says please log in first so we do have to sign up unfortunately they're gonna send me a code I'm gonna put the code in and then create account so now that I have an account I can go to device and let's go ahead and try to add it now so it's searching. It did find it. So I'm going to click on the IP address and it's going to say bind device. I'm going to confirm. There we go. We got a check mark and we are connected now. Click complete. As it's successful, it's going to load up our printer, but it looks like there's no connection for some reason. Maybe we have to re restart. Let's try force refresh. There we go. So it just needs to be refreshed and we are connected. So we are connected to Wi-Fi. There is somewhat a delay to one frames per second on the camera refresh, which is not too bad considering we're on mobile here. I think I am still connected to my computer also. So maybe because it's feeding two sources, probably slowing it down. But yeah, we pretty much have the Clipper integration here into the app, which is pretty incredible. I definitely like that. If I go off of Wi-Fi, we should still be able to connect through LTE and there we go. So now we're on LTE and we're connected. Still giving a pretty decent refresh rate and everything still works. We got our progress there and all the information about the print. So yeah, this printer has it all guys. You can connect it through any way you want through the slicer, through the web browser, or even through your phone here to do basic monitoring or pausing, stopping the print, printing again, whatnot else. So lots of options here for the Q1 Pro.